The purpose of today's video is to discuss the use of Microsoft Excel in investigating the limits of a function at a particular value. So an example in which you might find this useful is the following. Evaluate the limit if it exists. If the answer does not exist, enter DNE for does not exist, of course. So in this particular example, what we have is a function here right, of the variable t. Right, and we're asked to figure out what happens to the output of this function as the input t approaches 0. Now, since the given function is a difference of two rational functions, one thing you can do is to check to see if the function is well-defined when we plug in t equals zero. And if it is, rational functions are continuous at points in the domain, and so the answer would be obtained in that way. Now, in this situation, that's not the case, though, because plugging in t equals zero yields nonsense. So from here, there's two ways you can proceed. I'm first going to show you a way to approach this problem algebraically by simplifying the expression. And then second, we'll see how to complement that or supplement that with an Excel investigation. So if you look at the two rational functions in the parentheses here, we know that the second one can be written, its denominator can be re rewritten as t times t plus 1. That means that we can easily combine these two fractions in a common denominator after multiplying the first one by t plus 1 in the numerator and denominator. And when we do so, we obtain the expression 3t plus 3 minus 3 over t times t plus 1. And life is starting to get good here because the 3s cancel, the t's cancel, and the expression we're left with is now a rational function, but 0 the, recall 0 is the, the value of our uh, input, which we're trying to figure out the limit at. And uh, 0 is in the domain of this rational function. So we can go back now and compute the limit of our original problem as 3. Now let's suppose that you didn't see the algebraic trick you needed to solve the previous problem, or you simply needed to confirm the result graphically, which is always a good idea anyways. Excel provides you with some good options for performing those types of investigations. Now, this is a typical Excel spreadsheet, and you're probably familiar with working with these, but just to make sure, in case you've never seen one before, I'm going to note that the rows are numbered from one downward, and the columns are referred to with letters from uh, left to right in increasing order. And a specific cell in the worksheet, for example, the cell I currently have highlighted, would be referred to with the column letter followed by the row number. So this would be cell A1, for example, and that's that's you know displayed in the upper left corner of the sheet here. Now to plot a function in Excel, what we're going to do is we're going to create two columns similar to what you might have done in, in high school or even elementary school when graphing functions. And the first column is going to contain values for the input t, while the second column is going to contain values of the output f of t. So these are going to go on the x-axis, these on the y-axis, right, when we, when we actually do eventually make a plot. Now our goal here is to say what happens to the value of the output f of t as the input approaches 0. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to create a sequence of numbers which converges down towards 0 from above and a sequence of numbers which converges from below and check to confirm that both limits from above and the limits from below yield the value of three that we saw in the previous exercise. A shortcut to doing this in Excel is, let's say that we wanted to start at point one and decrease towards zero with increments of 100. Then if I create two cells here, one which has point one, one which has 0.09, and highlight those two cells, then you'll notice that as I scroll over the lower right corner of the box, my cursor changes from a solid white cross to a smaller black cross. So once it does that, if you hold down on the left mouse button and then drag the corner of the cell down, you'll notice that Excel will start filling in more cells using the same pattern that the first two followed. So I'm going to extend these cells down to negative 0.01. And now we have a representation, uh, a representative set of different t values at which we want to evaluate the function. Now to actually evaluate the function, recall our function is 3 over t minus 3 over t squared plus t. 
right? Now, in high school, what you might have done is you would have just taken point one and you would have plugged it in here for t everywhere you see t in the equation, right? In Excel, what we're going to do instead is plug in the cell number, A2 in this case, which contains the input value at which we want the output evaluated. So I'm going to put in A2 for t everywhere t appears in the function definition. And then Excel will compute the value of f for me. Right. The advantages of doing that using the cell numbers to compute the formula is now I can use the same drag function to have Excel compute for me the value of f at each other representative input value. It saves a lot of time. So you notice, of course, when when uh, I, I try and get Excel to plug in t equals 0, it just gives me this error because it's dividing by 0. So I'm going to delete that entry. But you'll notice that, sure enough, uh, whether I approach 0 from above or from below, it does appear that the values of the function are approaching 3. Now, if you want to confirm that with a smaller time step, we could start at 1 hundredth and proceed by increments of 1,000th. And you'll notice now, when I re-enter this new set of inputs, I don't need to do anything to the output column because Excel is always going to plug in whatever is in A2 into this formula. So saves a little bit of time there, too. And, and sure enough, again, I get even closer to 3 now using this new smaller time step. Now, if you want to graphically plot f of t, to get a visualization of what's going on, then highlight columns A and B, which contain your inputs and outputs. Go to the Insert tab and click on Scatter Plots. Now, that, that, that procedure might differ slightly if you have an older version of Excel, and you may have to spend a little bit time figuring how to modify it. But, but most, mostly, it's, it's a similar sort of procedure to plot. So here, you'll notice that Excel has plotted a point for each input-output pair. For example, 0 0.01 and 2.97, that would be this point right here. And it tells me the, the coordinates of that point as well. And you'll notice that as I decrease t towards 0, right, then on the horizontal axis, if I look at the values of these points, their values approach 3. And similarly, if I increase t towards 0, so that would be the limit from below or the limit from the left, it does appear that the function is approaching 3 from that direction as well. 